recently I've been like, Jesus, the way I'm feeling right now about this situation isn't because I'm supposed to feel this way. It's because I've been telling myself lies. It's because I've been believing lies. It's because I haven't been looking for the good in my situation. Hi friends, welcome to another episode of the Called Women podcast. And today I am so looking forward to this conversation with you. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you three ways to finally stop the cycle of negative self-talk. And y'all, I am learning personally, that I can be an extremely negative person when it comes to myself, when it comes to what I tell myself, what I say to myself, what I believe about myself. It's very easy for me to see the good in others around me, but it takes a lot of work to look at myself Uh, personally and truly value all that I am and all that I bring uh, to the table. And um, it's been an interesting journey figuring that out. It's been an interesting journey figuring that out about myself Um, because for so long, I simply thought that, oh, okay, maybe, you know, I just had a bad thought here. Maybe I need to relook at the situation with a different perspective. But I realized that that was not the case for me. The way that I thought about situations, the way that I thought about life, the way that I thought about my identity and who God made me to be was not healthy. I have believed lies about um, my abilities, about my weaknesses, about my strengths that simply are not true and that are not aligned with the truth and word of God. And today I want to come on to share with you three ways that I am learning how to combat negative self-talk because we all have an inner critic. We all have this little voice in our head that chooses to pop up whenever we're doing something new or whenever we're trying something scary or whenever we feel uncomfortable, right? There's this tiny, small voice within us that will tell us that you're not good enough. You're not capable enough. You're not smart enough. Just lies that are not true. So before I go into those three areas to help you to finally overcome and get out of the cycle of negative self-talk, I want to share with you two scriptures that really stood out to me as I was preparing for our conversation today. The first scripture comes from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, and it says, death and life is in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. I have heard this scripture all the time. Sometimes I would hear it and be like, y'all, I'm tired of hearing that scripture. Okay, I understand death and life is in the power of the tongue. But y'all, recently I've been like, Jesus, the way I'm feeling right now about this situation isn't because I'm supposed to feel this way. It's because I've been telling myself lies. It's because I've been believing lies. It's because I haven't been looking for the good in my situation. So death and life is in the power of your tongue. Whatever you speak, if you speak it enough, if you say it enough, your mind's going to believe it, your body's going to believe it, and it's all going to follow and come into agreement with the lie that you are now confessing and believing is true. The second scripture that I want to share with you guys comes from Psalms chapter one. 141 verse three, it says, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my life. Now this right here, this scripture is like a plea. Okay. It's like Jesus set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth, because I just be letting anything and everything come out of it. 
So this scripture here reminds me of boundaries. It reminds me of the importance of knowing what we're speaking into existence, what we're believing in our minds, what we're accepting as truth in our hearts. And that's what the Lord's really been speaking to me about, especially with the launch of the called women podcast with me stepping out and coaching with me beginning to step into a new level of authority and leadership within this community y'all I've had to really combat and go into a place of um intentionality with making the decision that hey no I am not who my past tells me I am I am not who the enemy is telling me that I am. I am who God says that I am. And in God, there's life. In God, there's freedom. In God, there's peace. In God, I am intelligent. With the Holy Spirit, I can do the hard things. I can say the things that I need to say. I can have the conversations I need to have because it's I'm not doing it out of my own ability. I'm doing it out of the ability of Jesus Christ. And that's how I want us to begin to speak and look and um, begin to walk in as we um, choose to answer the call of God on our lives. We cannot accept and believe lies. We cannot accept and believe the fears the fears that are talking to you or the fears that you've believed for so long. God is wanting to set you free. God does not want you and I to go another year living beneath our potential, living beneath our inheritance in him. God has a plan for your life. He doesn't just want you to merely live here without purpose or merely live here with, with feeling sad and depressed and angry and bitter. And he doesn't want you to live like that. He wants you to live in peace. He wants you to live in joy. He wants you to live from a place of confidence and knowing that you're not here by mistake, knowing that I'm not here by mistake but that I'm here for a purpose. So here's the first way that you can finally stop the cycle of negative talk. Take the thought captive. Have you ever taken the time, maybe get a little journal or something, and the thoughts that come through your mind that are negative, that do not align with scripture, the thoughts that make you feel scared, the thoughts that cause you to uh, doubt what God has asked you to do or what he's leading you to do, those thoughts Write those thoughts down. Take, um, take note of what you're believing each and every day. This is something that I'm even challenging myself to do, you know, this year is Natasha, what are those subtle lies that you're believing? You know, sometimes when you believed a lie about yourself, whether it's just like, I'm just not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. When you've said that to yourself so many times, it's become a part of you to where you don't know what life is outside of believing that lie. So what's a great tool to help you actually combat and be able to take notice and write down record of is what thoughts am I thinking? that do not align with scripture? What thoughts am I thinking that's causing me to hate myself, that's causing me to hate others, that's causing me to hate God? What are those thoughts? Take note of that and write it down. And once you take note of that, I want to encourage you to take a moment to give those thoughts to the Lord and to say, God, I don't want to think this way. This is not what you think about me. And also replace it with scripture. Replace it with truth. You can't just simply, you can, but it's not recommended to simply just remove a thought and not replace it with truth. If you remove a thought, you may remove it and you may, you know, it may be gone for a week or so, but if you don't uproot it, and replace it with truth about your identity, it's going to ruminate, it's going to come back around, and it's going to continue to taunt and torment you. So 
take the thought captive and you take the thought captive by recognizing what the thought is, comparing it to scripture, comparing it to the heart of God and to the truth of God and saying, no, this is a lie. I uproot this lie in the name of Jesus. And I am a daughter of God. I am not a woman who has no future. God has called me for such a time as this. My life matters. God knew me in my mother's womb. God has a plan for my life, replacing the lies with truth. The second way to stop negative self-talk is speak truth in life over yourself. Once you've uprooted, take the time to write on some sticky notes, to write on some index cards truth about yourself. Remind yourself of who you are. And this doesn't just have to be scripture. It can be truths about what you love about yourself. I'm intelligent. I am a, I'm a giver. I love gathering people. God has gifted me to encourage people. God has gifted me to create safe places in my house for people to gather God has gifted me to bring peace to chaotic situations through the words that I speak. Begin to replace truth and life over yourself so that it becomes a part of your world. It's not something that is easily able to be removed from you. It's something that is now a part of you where it's like, hey, I've uprooted it. And now my lifestyle is I affirm myself in truth every day. I look at my mirror and I have my three key scriptures that I say over myself. I carry index cards in my purse reminding me of truth. I put sticky notes in my car. I, re- I play music in my car reminding me of who I am. Speak life over yourself. Even when you don't feel like you're doing a good job, even when you feel like you're at your ends meet, tell yourself that it's not over until God says it's over. As long as you and I are still living and breathing, we have purpose. The enemy wants to distract us to make us be so consumed with what's happening now that we don't look into the future, that we don't look beyond our situation and have hope for the future. The enemy is after your hope. He's after your faith. He's after your belief system. So once you've uprooted that law, those lies, and you're replacing it with truth, right? You're then beginning to speak life over yourself and it's going to rejuvenate you from the inside out, y'all. And this is something that I am committing to working on and working in because I know that God has called me. I know that God is calling me higher. He's calling me to more. And I know with the mindset that I have right now, the mindset that I had two years ago, the mindset that I had a year ago is not going to be able to carry me into the future. So take an evaluation. What mindsets do you need to let go of? What lies do you need to stop believing for good? Once you understand that, You replace it with the truth and speak life over yourself. The last way to finally stop negative talk is to protect your eye gates. Protect your eye gates. Protect what you're consuming. Protect your ear gates. Protect what you're visually seeing. Protect what you're hearing, what you're lending your ear to in conversations. Protect what shows, protect your eye gates from not, from watching shows that will trigger things within you that are not healthy. Protect your eyes from going on social media and that, and and being on social media and that causing you to fall into sin or it's calling you, or it may be, um, you know, calling you as you're on the Instagram or Facebook, whatever it is, you feel like when you go on there, you get overwhelmed or you start to compare yourself or you start to doubt God's ability to do what he did in somebody else's life in your life, whatever, whatever you're watching, whatever you're reading, whatever you're putting in your ears, be watchful, protect those precious entryways, because what you hear 
goes into your soul. What you see goes into your mind and it goes into your soul. And if you keep consuming a lot of negative things, if you keep consuming lies, if you keep consuming so much information and you're not filtering it through the word and truth of God, you're going to get bogged down. You're not going to know what God is saying to you. You're not going to know if he's telling you left or right. God wants your eyes. God wants your ears. He wants access to it so that you can finally overcome the lies of the enemy so that you can now see yourself the way that he intended you to see yourself, which is to see yourself the way that he sees you. So I am so um, excited about these tools, these ways to help us get free, to help us as called women to say no more living beneath my inheritance. No more living beneath the call of God on my life. God has called you to be a giver of life. He hasn't just caused, called you to just give to people, but you hate yourself. He hasn't called you to build a great business, but you hate people or you hate yourself or you hate that you're here. He doesn't want you to live like that. He wants you to be healthy in every area of your life. He doesn't want success to kill you. He wants success to propel you. Hallelujah. So y'all. I hope this encouraged you because it encouraged me that, that we are women who are disciplined. We are women who are disciplined in the things of God, that we are women who are devoted to the things of God. And we understand the importance of being consecrated. We understand the importance of not just being shiny before people, but being pure before the Lord. So I pray that this episode blessed you. And um, I'm going to go over the, those three ways real quick, just in case you missed one. So the first way to stop negative self-talk is to take the thought captive. Secondly, speak truth and life over yourself. And lastly, protect your eye gates. Protect what you're consuming visually. And also, um, be careful. Be intentional with what you're hearing and you're listening to. So thank you all. Called Women, I appreciate you, your support, your love. We are building something beautiful here. And I'm so happy that you are a part of this community. Um, That's all for today. I'll see you guys in the next episode. What did you think of today's episode? I hope you loved it as much as I did. If you found any value in this podcast, it would mean the world to me if you downloaded this episode by hitting that little down arrow wherever you're listening. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any big takeaways from today's episode, feel free to share it with a friend that you think would benefit from this episode. I absolutely love hearing how you feel about the episodes that I'm sharing and creating for you. So feel free to tag me on social media with any truths or breakthroughs that you have received. I love reading what you find the most value in. Thank you again for being here today. And I pray that you felt the love of God through today's episode. And always remember that you belong in God's story.